Good afternoon. I have been asked by a lot of my clients and friends, whatever happened to Friday Facts? Well, Friday Facts was a show that I used to do weekly that talked about real estate life. I used to tell fun stories and tell you about what was going on in the modern peninsula and then somehow life got away with me and I stopped doing it. And so what I have decided to do is start a weekly show again on Fridays, but now we're calling it Real Estate Talk with Leslie DeLuca. And what I'm going to be talking about now is uh, different things like, I wrote things down because it's been a while and I'm older now. <laughs> But we'll talk about real estate stats on the Monterey Peninsula as well as what's going on all across the country, what's going on right now in this crazy real estate market. Um, I want to talk to you about what to be careful f uh, to look for, uh, just the big picture thinking about real estate because I know a lot of people right now are really, really desperate to get into a home and they're doing all kinds of things that are not really in their best interest. So we want to talk about those kinds of things. We want to talk about why it's why it's important to have a really good lender, why it's really good to have a team on your side. And just I'm going to every week I get all kinds of questions daily from realtors as well as clients and so I'm going to every week I'm going to answer some of the questions that I get from realtors as well as questions that I get from clients. So today I want to start out by talking to you about the stats on the Monterey Peninsula for April and oh my gosh it's nuts out there. Last week I showed between Saturday and Sunday I showed 27 homes I wrote five offers none of them got accepted and people might go oh well I guess you're a bad realtor no I'm not what happens is uh, we we wrote really great offers over asking price with really great offers in terms but each one of these offers had like 13 offers on them or each one of these properties had like 13 offers on them and many of these properties were uh, trust properties they were in trust and so it's there are a lot of nuances that you need to know when you're writing offers. And one of the things that I've done is I wrote this, uh, this it's a, just a white paper, it's a one page white paper and it's five things that you need to know before you start shopping for a home. And if you want it, I at the top of the screen it says that you can text I want it to 831-322-6080. If you want this white paper called the five things you need to know before you start shopping for a home, just text that number and I will have my team uh, send you the PDF and, and they'll just text you the PDF or and, and you can see what the five things are. It's just the five things that we have found are the most important things that you need to know before you start shopping for a home. And then it's just it's it's really important that you do these things because people are going out and they're shopping for a home unprepared and they're becoming very very disillusioned so if you want that white paper just text I want it to that number at the top of the screen and I'll get my team to get it out to you they'll just down they'll just shoot you over they'll text you back that PDF so the stats on the Monterey Peninsula and, and I just kind of combined all of the stats on the Monterey Peninsula um, to give to you. Now if you want, also if you would like to have the stats on the Monterey Peninsula for April and all of the different different uh, areas, you can also text the phone number at the top of the screen and just let me know which, which cities that you'd like to have on the stats and neighborhoods and everything because I can also send you those because those PDFs are ready too but just in the interest of time I don't want to bore everybody because I love stats but a lot of people don't like stats but I just wanted to tell you how many sold properties that we have in the month of April now of course 
this is not all encompassing because today is the last day of April and we will have more but so just to be very transparent this is as of an hour ago what has sold in the month of April Monterey Pacific Grove, Pebble Beach, Carmel, Prunedale, just on the Monterey Peninsula. This is not the whole county. So there were 237 sold properties in the month of April and the average day days on the market is 29 which can seem a little bit odd because really what's happening is properties are going on the market and once properties go on the market a lot of them are going on the market like today and they'll say that all offers are due by Monday at 5 o'clock. And so uh, on Monday at 5 o'clock, they're looking at all the offers and they're accepting the offers. Now, once, once those offers are in on Monday, you're probably not going to get the opportunity to counter. So that's what you have to understand as well, which is in that that manual or that you know that one pager that I did the five things you need to know before shopping for a home I give you tips on how to write an offer so if you want that that's in that that you can text me for so anyway average days on the market 29 don't let that fool you because that the houses that are lasting that long right now are not priced right they're really not lasting that long the maximum sales price in April was $17,333,000. So that's another thing is the market is crazy at the high end and the low end. So you can have, I've shown properties that are $3.5 million and they still have multiple offers over asking price. And again, if you would like to see that printout of all the houses, you know, the 237 properties that sold this month and what they were listed for and what they sold for unbelievable but most of them sold over asking price and and you can see just how much which i have that stat too which i'll tell you in a minute the medium sales price the median sales price is eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars now don't let that fool you either because that in that includes the whole you know all of the cities so why that number might be different is median sales price because I'm including Seaside, Pacific Grove, Carmel, M Marina, Salinas, and so we have all of those numbers. So while you know the average sales price in Carmel might be 2.5 million, the average sales price in Salinas is not. So when I say average sale price, that's the average sales price on the peninsula and the Salinas Valley. So don't don't let that fool you either. So what I'm saying is this is this is encompassing all of my cities that I service. The list of sale price is 101%. So what that means is when the properties are listed at, at a certain price, they're selling for 101% over asking price. So they're not, you know, there's no wiggle room right now. If a property is listed at a certain price, you have to go at asking price or above. You can't, you cannot go under asking price right now. You, there's, you just cannot do it. So if you are seriously wanting to purchase a home and you seriously want to be in the game you can't go under asking price because you you will not be successful just know that and um this has been holding steady really since january in january the uh, list to sale price was a hundred point three percent in february it went down to about 95 percent and this month it's been a hundred and one percent so as you can see, it's it's really holding steady right now. Why? Lack of inventory, which we'll talk about in a little while, what the lack of in inventory means, what's happening with that, and, and all of that. So, in saying that, um, I did want to show you this funny video on, that is on TikTok, which has, uh, I just, I couldn't get it uploaded, but it's it, it shows this, this you know this guy saying he has I have this apple here and it's for sale and they're, they're going oh I want it and I want it more and I want it more but people are just bidding 
anything and everything on these homes and they're not even looking at the disclosures. And, and that might be a broad statement for me to say, or it might not be fair, but what the, the reason I'm saying this, this is this is the reason. So what just happened to me yesterday is clients of mine had an offer in on a property in Prunedale. It was on an acre in an older home that we that needed a lot of work and it was in a trust and they really really liked it and they really wanted it had quite a few offers and our offer came in second to a cash offer and then the um, the listing agent called me yesterday and said that the uh, their deal fell apart during the inspection period and not because of any fault of the property but the the the, the the buyer backed out and so um, I called my client and we had looked we had gotten some disclosures before when we made the offer but of course now since they're an escrow they had more disclosures so I asked for the disclosures and we looked at them and we had of course offered over asking price and and there was a uh, there was an appraisal in the packet but and it had a price for more than we offered actually so now we have more disclosures and so before I sent the disclosures to my client I looked them over as I usually do now as a real estate agent I am not allowed to make comments on any disclosures or any inspections because I'm not licensed to do so but I I'm allowed to point out things that they should be aware of or that they should take a look at. Well, these disclosures clearly had um, disclosure from the seller that there had been water intrusion on the property and they used the word mold, which we can't use, but they had said that they said that there's mold and they said there are holes in the siding and they had indicated things that are very important to look at as a buyer because they could be very dangerous they could be very costly and so when I sent those to my client I said I want you to be pay particular attention to these disclosures that you know that's that indicate the water intrusion and the 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 TDS which is the transfer disclosure statement that the seller discloses things that they know of the property is all the material facts they know I want you to pay particular attention to what they said well though you know because even the testing for mold is not inexpensive so when you are in contract on a property and you conduct these inspections it costs the, the buyer money should you find things that you don't like and then the seller will not comply with a credit or remediation now you're out this money and then you don't buy the property so you really really have to be thoughtful before you dive into these things and I always try to get my clients to think financially and think like a business rather than emotionally because you can always find another property to buy right you always can and so you want to really look at things from a logical level and so I mean that's something that I really wanted to talk about today is be very 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 aware of the disclosures and the um, you know the, the the way the the property looks and and what you're going to have to spend it to get the property to a condition that's going to make you happy and don't settle because you're emotional about wanting to buy anything 
that's that's if, if I if I can't give you anything else to leave with today, that's the one thing that I want people to understand is be very very careful about inspections. Never never go with inspections that are already given to you by a seller. Get your own inspections. If you decide not to get your own inspections, look at those inspections and if they say that you should get further um, further uh, look further into it, get a contractor over there. Get somebody over there to make sure before you go spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. That's not in my best interest to tell you that because I'm supposed to sell you the house but it's in your best interest before you buy the house to do that. And I will always tell you to do that. Don't get crazy about the market. Think about your future, think about the big picture, always. Um, let's see, what else? Let's see, the, that's, that's, a, that's really the, the biggest thing is, you know, know the, air, know the area that you're going to buy and pay attention to the neighborhood. I always tell my clients this, whenever you wanna buy a property, Call the police department in the area, give that address, and ask the police if there have been any incidents in that neighborhood in the past few years. Because you always, you also want to make sure you're not buying a house next year to crazy neighbors, right? You, you need to just really thoroughly check out all aspects of the property. First time home buyers a lot of times don't think about that. They don't, they're so excited, they don't think about all those things. but. But you, you do need to think about all of that. It's big picture thinking. Zillow. So anyway, um, that's what I want to tell you. Market's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but my five things to do before you start shopping for a home is going to give you the five most important things you need uh, to do with lending, with how to write offers, with how to look for properties really great stuff and I'm happy to share it with you I give it to all of my clients and uh, all you have to do is text me I want it and you got it uh, what else okay so I wanted to show you something here some things everybody's also worried about is are we in a housing bubble we're not. Let me show you something. So right now, American home equity is skyrocketing. Okay, let me put this up here. Um, the average gain in equity of mortgaged homes has been $26,300. The current equity, the current average equity people have in homes is $204,000. And 38%, about 38% of the homes in the United States are owned free and clear. And there's been a 16.2% increase in equity totaling over $1.5 trillion. So here's the thing. We are not going to have a housing bubble like we had in 2006. Everybody's thinking, let me get this out of my face. Everybody, but... The thing is, back in 2006, people were just spending stupid money and getting these crazy loans. Right now, most most homes in America, people have this kind of equity. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but most people have at least $200,000 worth of equity in their homes. Even if they can't afford to pay for them anymore because the, the you know, the economy tanks, they are not likely to go into foreclosure they're more, more more likely to sell them and so and so we're we're not going to have this housing bubble where people are going into foreclosure and in in a in the United States there's been a $26,000 uh, gain in equity and there's 38% of the houses in America people don't owe any money on them so that's a misnomer. The other thing I wanted to show you is that the residential real estate market's on its biggest tear 
since night since 2006. Now that was just before the housing bubble burst and set off a global recession. But in nearly every meaningful way, today's market, like I was telling you, is the inverse of the previous boom. Because in the mid 2000s, there were loose mortgages. You know the standards. It was nuts back then. It was crazy. I lived it. Um, people with poor credit histories, people with no money, people with ridiculous jobs were getting homes that they could not afford. They were way beyond their means. And these mortgages were, you know, had really low mortgage mortgages that were going to triple with, with, you know, mortgages per month, which were three times what these people made. That's not happening anymore. And so, so now we have a demand for homes that's outpacing new listings right there's the buyer competition is continuing to intensify and on average there are four offers per home um, that, for every home that closed in February now that's nationally it's been even crazier than that one of my friends had 70 offers on a home in California but here in in our area there's 13 offers nine offers five offers I mean it's it's crazy there's so much buyer demand right now um but according to nar this is february because we're, st we're still getting like february reporting the confidence in index report is a monthly survey of the realtors about their transactions so one one year ago there were two or three buyers for every home sold now the intense competition has had to uh, has led a double digit price growth and property selling in record time to get back to a healthy supply listen to this 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 is will blow you away to get back to a healthy supply level equivalent to six months of monthly demand which is what what a healthy market is we need an additional 2.7 million homes to be on the market for sale that's according to the national association of realtors unbelievable so we need 2.7 million more homes on the market to get six months of inventory yeah that's what we need okay let's see what else so this is just showing you the average number of offers received on the most recent closed sales which i told you it's more i just thought these were interesting so the annual home price appreciation if you look at this um so this is the average annual appreciation is, you know, in like 2005 is 11.4%, but this was not healthy. Uh, right now in 2020, 9.2% a, a year is the average annual appreciation. That's pretty darn good. So that's that. And okay, the default risk in the mortgage market. This is interesting too, because let's see, if you look at, here's 2008 when things were really bad. So the product risk, right, was way up here and the borrower risk was here. So you had really bad lending products and then it got better, better, better. Here's, you know, it still wasn't too good here, but here's how it is right now. And so the borrower risk is way down here because it's, you, as you all know, getting a mortgage is not easy. You have to have good credit, good income. So the risk for defaults in the mortgage industry is not that great. So mortgage, I showed you this already. This is, this, this is a great indication of where we're at. So that is my first reunion with the old Friday facts which is now called real estate talk with Leslie DeLuca the inaugural uh, 20 minutes I think I went over today I went over a little bit uh, 20 minutes every Friday real estate facts with Leslie DeLuca uh, just if you want your if you want your five things that you need to know for shopping for a home, just text I want it to 831 322 
800-600-6080. My team will get it right out to you. If you'd like a 15 minute strategy session on where you're at in the real estate world, you can uh, direct message me. I'm happy to set that up for you. We could do it by Zoom. And as always, direct message me any questions you have and look out for me every day on The Daily DeLuca. Have a great weekend and I will see you. It's a beautiful day. I'll see you out there in the sunshine.